Welcome to the last talk for today. And again, I closely work with Bernard Rieke on this. We saw a lot of different seated user interfaces today and in some talks there were already mentioned differences to standing interfaces. Obviously, sitting better matches virtual sitting and standing virtual standing. But we also heard today that often it is not that clear and easy. Thus, beside the obvious, are there any general advantages of one over the other? That is what we've asked ourselves and we started to systematically classify sitting versus standing. Therefore, therefore, we put up a table and collected variables that are depending on the posture, for instance, cyber sickness. It is known that a sitting posture can be beneficial here, even if more factors such as the chosen travel technique play an important role. Now, we went through different variables and very often we had to put down an interval with the remark that it depends on the degree of embodiment used for interaction. Finally, we went back to the start and added the degree as a continuous factor represented by its endpoints here. Going from low to a high degree in embodiment for the seated case and from low over high to walking in the standing case because we found it helpful to support the continuum with a further point in this case. Let's finish the cells for cyber sickness and see that a higher degree of involved body cues usually also has a positive impact on the degree of sickness. To better characterize the combinations, we put down typical locomotion interfaces, which for a low degree of embodiment in both postures is for example controller or pointing based steering. An example of techniques with a high degree of embodied interaction are leaning interfaces, which also exist for both postures. Last but not least, redirected walking or free walking is an example for an even higher involvement of the body in the standing case. Let's jump to the depending variables again. Comfort is the next we identified. And here we are talking about long-term usage and fatigue and not about sickness. Sitting is comfortable for a very long time, where standing is not. And this is especially the case, as we also heard today, when it's standing for no purpose. That means with a low degree of embodiment, where walking on the other side of the continuum is okay again. The level of enhancement, engagement and ability to move mostly increase with the degree of embodied interaction, but the level is also higher when standing. However, standing is less safe than sitting. That addresses, for instance, the risk of falling. And more movement even increases the risk. The degree of realism depends on what we want to mimic, we already said, but more freedom can serve more different scenarios. The technical complexity increases with the room that has to be tracked. So, we do not have enough time to go over the table in each cell now, but here is the current status so far. More variables that we have identified are the locomotion range and the usable space, the locomotion precision, the interaction precision, the inclusiveness and accessibility, uh, possible multi-user interaction and the metabolic energy consumption. Now we need you. In your eyes, is there anything wrong, not rated or balanced correctly? Where do we need or have proof already? Did we miss any depending variables or even factors? Do you have further suggestions?